excellent so you are all really really very welcome my name is sarah barretto i am the diocesan schools commissioner for the diocese of plymouth um, we came up with this idea very recently really just some of us having a chat thinking about how can we make the best of the situation we're in and trying to offer formation for staff particularly those new to their diocese or new to working in catholic schools um, just trying to offer something really and and some of you i know have uh, you know are working from home or have some time at home so we thought we'd try and um, fill some of that time for those who wish so you don't have to come every week if you do this week and think this is not for you that's fine there's no register um, it's exactly the same invitation every week so it's the same details so just make sure that you've you've kept that you're very welcome to to join us i'm just going to share my screen for a moment because i've got a little little if i can find it there we are a little powerpoint for us just to kind of start our session so as you can hopefully see um we have called our session so what's it like working in a catholic school and our hope is um eventually we will be able to use these sessions to record them and use them in our schools but also perhaps to use them in sessions that will offer up for, for people there may be colleagues you know who who work in other schools who are catholic but not actually working in a catholic school so the hope is that we'll be able to use these sessions for them we're recording them so that we'll be able to use them in the future for some kind of induction program and we will be storing those somewhere for all of you to be able to use with colleagues as well so this is the book that we have um quite loosely booked our um uh, based our sessions on uh, we've kind of renamed them but we have redemptorist permission and actually sister judith russie is here um and Raymond Friel will be a speaker one of our other weeks. Um, so we have permission from Redemptors. We're not breaking any copyright here. Um, I would encourage you, you don't have to by any means, but I would encourage you to purchase this book. When I was a head teacher, I used to buy a copy for all um, new members of staff, just because it's really useful and practical. Um, but I wanted to start, I'm fortunate I have got my copy with me. I wanted to start really by just reading something from his Archbishop Malcolm now. He's this Right Reverend Malcolm McMahon, Bishop of Nottingham, it says in the book, but obviously moved on since then. So during his apostolic visit to the United Kingdom in 2010, Pope Benedict met with teachers and pupils from Catholic schools throughout our country in St. Mary's University College, Twickenham. He reminded us that there is a distinctive Catholic focus to education. In your Catholic schools, there is always a bigger picture over and above the individual subjects you study, the different skills you learn. All the work you do is placed in the context of growing in friendship with God and all that flows from that friendship. I'm just letting people in. So you learn not just to be good students, but good citizens, good people. A good school provides a rounded education for the whole person and a good Catholic school over and above this should help all of its students to become saints. So really that's just to give some kind of context to um, the work that we're, we're thinking about here and then to move on to just a few very polite reminders that we have got um, we are recording the session keep your mic on mute please if you're struggling for a signal turn off your um camera perhaps and use the chat function if you have a question after claire has spoken sister judith i'm just going to show um a, a prayer for today which people may may find useful to um to keep or have a look at and then sister judith is going to lead us in our prayer in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen I will show love to my colleagues and students. I will invite joy of the Lord to rise in me. I will walk in peace and not stress. I will be patient with others and listen much. I will show kindness to others. I will do good for others despite circumstance. I will be gentle and not harsh. I will allow love and grace to control my actions.
Thank you, sister. So I would um, like to introduce you to now a very dear friend of mine, Claire Hogg, who is a head teacher in the Diocese of Shrewsbury um, and uh, probably is going to tell you a fair, a fair bit about her school. But Claire and I met when we did the um, National School of Formation training together. So we've been friends for um, quite a few years now. And in fact, there are quite a few of us here who have done that training. Claire, you are really, really very welcome. And you're going to tell us a little bit about how, how you've used this book in um, training and formation with your own staff. So very welcome. Thanks, Sarah, and, and thanks, everybody. It's lovely to be here with you all today. It's really nice to see friendly faces. I feel like I'm doing these Zoom meetings all the time and you, you only see certain people, so it's nice to see lots of lovely faces and friends here with us today. Um, Sarah just asked me to just uh, talk about the book and, and how we've used the book in school. Um, we are no way the perfect school. We've made lots and lots of mistakes. Um, we, we're not perfect in what we do. Uh, but the, the book really did help us on, on a journey um, of really opening our eyes to see what other staff, other members of our school were seeing and experiencing. Uh, so if I just share some of those stories, I'll try and be confidential because I, I don't want people to be um, identified, but I'll try and tell you some bits and pieces about our, our school community. Um, I became acting head in September 2014. And I was very, very fortunate to have a very supportive um, chair of governors, uh, Father Jerome Fagan, who actually bought me and sent me the copy of How to Survive Working in a Catholic School, um, which Raymond and Sister Judith had written. Um, we then later in the year attended the Educare um, retreat in June 2015. And we got quite giddy and starstruck because we were sat behind Sister Judith and Raymond and uh, we nudged each other to say, oh, they're the people that wrote this book. So um, Father Jerome then, with his lovely parishioners, um, invested in a copy for every single member of our staff. And in, on our inset day in September of 2015, with Scylla Black, You Are My World, blasting in the background, he presented each member of our staff with the book and blessed them in their vocation. If you remember, Scylla's funeral was te televised that summer in Liverpool and we had sat and watched that funeral and just celebrated the church that day. It was just amazing to see all those celebrities and uh, our wonderful priests that day um, just sharing the faith and everybody loving it and, and celebrating Scylla Black's life. So. Father Jerome as he was, we had a bit of Scylla. And I think at this time, I don't know about you, you all might be feeling a little bit anxious and not sure what's going on and am I doing my job right? Am I doing enough? I do suggest, like I did this morning, he's blasting a bit of you on my world around the kitchen and having a dance because it will do the world the good. So from there, we then really explored what it means to work in a Catholic school. And what we had to do was open our ears and not take for granted what we thought we knew and to listen to staff and there were some really really honest conversations i had one member of staff say to me i feel like i'm doing the hokey cokey i don't know when to stand or sit and i'm terrified i'm going to put my left foot in when it should be my right foot and i suddenly thought well yeah you you are the church and you're leading and we haven't really prepared you as well as we should have done I then heard another member of staff who said that he sat in the ensuite of his bedroom for hours into the night with his wife saying, it's okay, you can wash it off. Because I'd said in an Ash Wednesday service, be proud, don't rub it off, keep those ashes on your face all day and show people that you are a Christian. And he was terrified about washing his ashes off. So I think that's the first thing as people in Catholic schools, we have to listen to where people are at. Do they really understand the faith? I know I don't understand every element of it. So are we asking too much of our staff? Have they got the um, training and the formation that they need? Um, and as I said before, I do truly believe that for many of our families, the school is the church. So it's so important uh, that those staff, those people feel that they can portray Jesus's message and not be scared of it and not be worried but to really you know fulfill their vocation in the Catholic school. 
Um, one of the things we did, and I, I did nick this from um, Martin, who's here today, uh, we actually changed the name of our uh, CPD program to CPDF. And we looked at what it means for formation for our students and our staff, more importantly, our staff at this point. And we invited um, speakers into the school, such as uh, many that you're going to have the uh, privilege of listening to over the next couple of weeks. Sister Judith came in, David Wells has been in, Raymond Friel's been in, uh, Father Dennis came in, Alison Burroughs, Martin Johnson, spending a lot of time with our teachers and staff, uh, catering staff, admin team, support staff, about what it means to work in a Catholic school and what our vocation is all about. But the book was really helpful in starting that conversation, especially the, the staff talked about the clear definitions and explanations regarding elements of our faith we may take for granted. You, you know, some staff were saying, I didn't really know how to pray the sign of the cross. I didn't really know why you genuflect. And, and that book was a safe haven for those sort of conversations to take place and to allow our school to grow as a Catholic school. Um, one example I've got, and I'm sure you won't mind me sharing this, I inherited a lovely custom that each Monday morning for briefing, the staff would, on a rotor system, say the prayer, lead the prayer that day. And a member of um, the MFL department came to me and he was not happy. He said, I really don't want to do this. I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, I don't want to pray. I just don't want to do it. I'm quite happy to sit and listen to others, but I don't want to do it. And I insisted that he had to do it. I felt really bad about this, but I said, no, you must. If, if, if this drops away, we'll lose it. And, and it's really important that we hear your thoughts and, and prayers and that we pray together as a community. And he went off a little bit, not happy with me. And the gentleman in question is, is a French gentleman. And sadly, it was the weekend of the terrorist attacks in Paris in November 2015. And he came in on that Monday morning and he led the most moving and beautiful prayer session I have ever been in. And it came from the heart and it was, it was just wonderful to the extent that none of us spoke afterwards and there was no briefing that day. I actually wrote to him later. Instead of meeting him, I wrote to him to tell him how wonderful that had been to hear that from him and that the fact that he'd finished saying a prayer in French for the people of Paris and so many people commented on it. Later that year the same gentleman sadly lost his mum who went to heaven that year and I ummed and ahed and I thought do I send a mass card? I always send a mass card. Will he be insulted? What should I do? I sent a mass card and then a couple of days later he came in and he showed me a photograph that his dad had put the mass card pride of place on the mantelpiece and the two of them were so touched that a parish community was praying for his beloved mother he, he just couldn't get over it so I think that's the first thing I've learned being ahead is that you should never compromise on your own faith and that people will get so much from your your belief and your um, prayer life and your convictions. I've also had people who, uh, another member of staff, again, very vocal that they didn't feel they should be part of the Catholic side of the school. And I was arguing there's no Catholic side of the school, the Catholic, the Jesus Christ is in the center, but we had lots of discussions. Again, uh, the same lady was very poorly um, and developed breast cancer. Again, I hummed and hard. I, I would always pray for people. I would always send prayers. And I did. And we got into a, a lovely conversation over that 12 months. And one of her friends told me she has a little box in her living room where all the prayer cards are kept that I sent to her. Um, because although she doesn't believe in God she, and she says she doesn't know anybody who is religious, she gets so much comfort out of knowing that people are praying for her and were praying for her through that time. The, the other thing that we've done as a school, we, we, we spent a lot of time with prayer. I, uh, we talked about what it means that in assemblies, um, if you're hanging on to the radiator, leaning on the radiator, what does that say to the children? If you're not contributing to the prayers, if, you're, if they can't see you physically praying, how does that help them on the faith journey? So we decided as a, a school that we would be very, um, it, it was so important that the role modeling of that prayer life was seen by the children, that we would sit down in assembly, we would sit down in mass. Um, 
David Wells talks, I'm sure he said that it, 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 when he gives his talks, he talks about, you know, the deputy head standing at the front of the mass, staring out at the kids. And I used to do that all the time. And we've stopped that. And we said, no, they need to see us praying. And that's had a huge impact on how the children come into assemblies and uh, take part in the mass. So another something that we've done. But as a school, we want to put our faith into action and we want to open our eyes and our arms out as well as our arms in prayer. Um, so we looked at our curriculum and we put, we looked at our curriculum and thought, how can we see, judge, act and celebrate things that are going on in the world? How can we make our curriculum more uh, focused on social justice. Um, now this part has been my formation uh, because as a school, I feel we've created something that is much more radical and powerful than I thought possible. And that is because of the individuals involved. Um, we did have the mistake again, just little funny stories where um, on the timetable, it said building a kingdom. And I said, I'm not being nitpicky, but it's building the kingdom. And I know it's only a little word, but it's got big meaning. So, um, so we now have building the kingdom um, in our timetable, daily reflections and how we can put our education, the skills and, and the knowledge that we've received in school into the, making the world a better place. Um, I also, and through that, the staff have embraced that much more than anything else and have taken that idea and, and run with it. And I feel they see their role now as a vocation rather than a job. And they get quite excited. We had offset a few months ago. Um, I think it might have actually been a few weeks ago, but I don't know where we're up to with dates. Um, we had Ofsted in and one of the days that Ofsted were meant to be in was one of our Building the Kingdom days. So I, I phoned the lady and I said, what do you want us to do? And she went, oh, well, no, I need you to go back to the timetable and the curriculum and schemes of learning. So I said to the staff, I'm really sorry, we're going to have to cancel Building the Kingdom Day. But there was uproar, absolute uproar, that Ofsted should come in and see what we were all about and see our Building the Kingdom Day. So we ignored Ofsted and did our Building the Kingdom Day instead. But that to me was really powerful about how this, how we've gone on a journey from how to survive working in a Catholic school to the team actually living their vocation and defending their vocation and getting quite cross with me that I'd let the offset inspector talk me out of not having a build in the kingdom day which was just brilliant and um, the other thing personally I've had to do is examine my own faith and um, the catholic faith is very beautiful but I did have my eyes closed to a lot of it so me having to find out more about the catholic traditions the liturgy the saints um, was has been so enlightening so that I can offer um, as a head teacher in a Catholic school the whole faith and not just Claire Hogg's interpretation of the faith and that's been a really big learning curve for me that um, everybody has got their faith journey and everybody can bring their faith to the school and it's really important that I have my eyes open to everybody um, whether they you know whatever spectrum they at part of the spectrum they are on in their Catholic faith um, I had to stop looking at my faith in a narrow way and then embrace the whole so that the school could meet Jesus in lots of different ways. I have um, a large um, EAL community um, who have very different views on the Catholic faith than I do. But actually, when you open your eyes and listen to their stories, listen to their faith journeys, you know, it puts you to shame. So that was, for me, that was my formation. Um, I think it's really important for all schools to realise that we all have something to bring. Every single person has something to bring to the school. Um, it's Catholic school, your gifts and your talents, you're there for a reason. Um, and one of the things that we decided as a school we thought was so important was that we saw our school community as a family. And through that, we wanted to say that everybody would be championed, everybody would be included. and without them even realizing the staff were coming to me and basically saying we need to put this forgiveness and reconciliation into practice and without the words that's what they were saying so we looked at our whole thing about exclusions and we've and again i've now got staff banging on my door when we're getting very very close to a permanent exclusion saying is this right should we be doing this claire why don't i take them for a while why don't i mentor them and i've had people like my caretaker he does um, kickboxing with a child who 
really shouldn't be in our school at the moment because of, of, of the issues that they're going through and the behaviour that they've portrayed. But the team don't want anybody to be excluded. And again, that's our Catholic values and virtues shining through without them really knowing what they're doing. Um, so as I said, we very much look at the gifts and we focus on what God has called us to be. We're now looking at our performance management. So we get rid of performance management and appraisal. And it's more about what do you bring to the table? What can you bring to the table? How can we help you to be who God wants you to be in our school? That is a risk. Um, I do get staff coming to me regularly with ideas where I think, how are we going to do that? And, ooh, and then they throw it back in my face that actually, isn't this what we're all about? Isn't this our vocation? So it's brilliant in that way, but it does mean that you have to let go of your control. And one of your prayers just said, Sarah, allow love and grace to control your actions. In my experience, after reading the book, after being guided by some super t um, teachers and mentors that really know what a Catholic school is all about, I would, my advice to you is just allow love and grace to control the situation and it will be so much better than you first planned or thought. So that's just some of the ideas that we've had at St. Thomas More in Crewe. Um, I'm sure you've got a lot more things that you've been doing in your school. It'd be great to share some ideas, but that's just what we've been doing at St. Thomas More. Wonderful. Claire, thank you so much. That was really inspiring and, and lovely. I'm sure there were lots of echoes for, for people um, in so much of what you said, but I was also thinking that, yes, be, be filled with that grace on your best day. I think we all have to accept that we, we can't always <laughs> allow it to lead us. We might always want to. But I'm sure at the moment there are a lot of days when that's a, a struggle for, um, for lots of people. So um, I don't see any questions in the chat yet, but I mean, there is also a, um, a hands up facility there, isn't it? I don't have that because obviously I'm uh, leading it. But if, if anybody does want to verbally ask their question, we're not flooded at the moment. So maybe somebody just want, wants to share something that, that struck them, something that made your heart sing from what Claire said. Anyone got any uh, any responses or questions? Don't be shy. Hi, Sarah. It's Julianne here. I raised my hand, but I don't know if you could oh, see. Oh, I can't see that you have raised. Oh, I can now. I can lower your hand. Look at that. <laughs> Hi, Julianne. Welcome. Hello, um, Claire, it was just so lovely. I've listened to you speak many times, both professionally and personally. Um, and just hearing that story, um, which I have heard before, but about the um, modern foreign languages teacher and just how much um, you're you reaching out and sharing the good news and letting him and his family know uh, that you were there with him um, doing that. As we've heard, you know, do, being St. Barnabas, you were just right next to him, walking with him on that journey. Um, and um, you know, it sounds a bit like Strictly here. It's been a roller coaster over the past few weeks. And um, just, I don't know about other people. Um, forgive me, Sarah, but today was one of those days I'm in school and I was like, oh my goodness, oh for goodness sake, I can't believe I've got to do this. And just hearing that message, Claire, of remember what you're doing, remember why you're doing it. Um, and um, so just thanks very much. Really enjoyed that. Thank you, Julia. Myself again now. Thank you. Uh, Julianne is one of our one of our future speakers. Sorry. Sorry, no, Sam. Just saying. Julianne did say to me one day. She shared with me how um, a parent had come in that was quite angry about something, and she said, "Let's sit and pray." And I thought, "Oh wow, I am going to try that." And I tried it with parents, and it was the most horrendously embarrassing, awful thing to do. But I stuck at it because I thought Julianne was doing this, so I can do this. And then I met up with Julianne and I told her the story and she went, oh, I can't do that anymore. So, you know, we all do have our bad days. We're not perfect all the time. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Thank you, Claire. Claire, I've got a question. I've, I've posted yeah, it no. in questions as well. So, Claire, if you had to pinpoint one thing that was a common factor in the success of Catholic teachers being authentic teachers, what do you think it is that's common across them all? That's the, the, the thing that you would say, don't miss that. Um, for, hi, Matt, for, personally for me, um, I think this idea, idea of formation, I think schools have 
got to put time, money and resources into formation. And you've got to have really good mentors around you. For me, it's Edge Carum and the National School of Formation that they really did open my eyes completely. And sharing things with people, um, again, Martin, a lot of what you've done, I've stolen because it's been so good and inspiring. And, and you do get bogged down in all the paperwork and, and the running of the school and you need time and space and the staff need time and space to pray and to think, where are we going? What's our mission? We're more than this. We're more than the DFE. We're more than Ofsted. We're child-centered. We're Jesus Christ-centered. Um, but you've got to invest in that and you've got to invest in that regularly, I'd say. Perfect. Thank you, Claire. Well, Brendan. Sorry, Martin, was there? No, just thank you. No follow-up. Thank you, Claire. So, Brendan, I can see that you've got a question in the chat, but you may as well ask it yourself. Do you want to read it? It's, it was really related to what had been set up just now. Yeah, would you like to share the impact of other colleagues in your own journey? Yeah, um, I, as it, many of you will know, um, I, I started off as deputy head for two weeks and then went into headship after two weeks, so didn't know anything about the job, didn't have a clue what I was doing. Um, and, for, you know, I'm, I'm a great believer that God's looking after you all the time. And a flyer landed on my desk about Educarum. Um, and I, I think that's what's really important is the fact that if you can see other people in education doing things, then why can't you? And every time I meet up with, um, for me, it's National School of Formation and the Educarum team. Every time I meet up with them, I think, well, they're doing it, so I can do it. And just things like, as I said, the idea of formation and CPDF, that came from Martin, Julie Ann with her prayer life came, you know, uh, Sarah with lots of different ideas that you've talked about. I thought I can do that. The other thing that's interesting for me is primary colleagues. And um, sometimes I hear things like, well, we can't do that at high school. Well, you can, you can, and it works. And, and I think the more that you see that other people are doing it and it's working and it's having an impact, it gives you that confidence to go back to your own school and think, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. And, and I'll be honest, there's times I stand up and I don't have the words that maybe Sister Judith have or Brendan had. And I think, oh, I've not explained it in the right way. But it, does, it always comes back. The staff always seem to get what we're talking about and come back and produce something that's just amazing. But as I say, I do think you need, if I miss sessions with Educarum and the National School of Formation or, or, or opportunities like this which i'll be here every week so i need i personally need this because it just keeps me um focused on what my vocation is and what catholic schools are all about without getting bombarded with all the other stuff thank you claire yeah i think the the networking with with colleagues from other dioceses and from around the country that's what's so exciting about this we've got so many of you from from other places we've got two more questions so so sarah williams would you like do you want to open up your mic and ask your own question yeah happy to hi claire um i'm just interested in you mentioned building the kingdom days um what they look like you're a secondary school are you yeah we are right. and, and, and again we, we stole this idea <laughs> from um it was ruth who i think is one of your speakers as, as well and sister judith um, and Martin put together a, a, a curriculum, we're talking about curriculum and building the kingdom and um, looking at your curriculum through Catholic social teachings. And I think Martin's going to talk about it later on in the okay. session. Um, I, I didn't think it would work in a secondary school. And I did try lots of different things. We firstly tried to have five days in the calendar where we, we didn't take anyone out of classrooms. We haven't gone that far or anything. We've just asked the staff to look at their schemes of learning and say, where is, where is the spirit in this? Where is the magic in this? Where is, you, you know, um, so we, we, we took something like Pentecost and science have gone off and looked at the fire element of it. MFL looked at the idea of people speaking in different languages and we focused it on the liturgical calendar. Um, so we've had like Joseph the Worker Day became our careers day. 
um, you know, Women Day of Prayer for Women. We looked at women in design and women in technology and things like that. So it was just a sort of stepping stone to see what is our curriculum for? Is it, are we loving learning or are we teaching to an exam? Um, so we looked at the curriculum first. Now we've d built it in that every day for 20 minutes, uh, it, it's probably a form time for a lot of people, but we, d we don't use it as form time. We use it as building the kingdom time where they look, newspapers, social issues that are going on in the world, and what can they do? So we've banned things like one pound for a non-uniform day. And we've said, no, that's lazy. Be more creative. Write to your MP. So we've had the MPs in, we've had general election debates, um, we've, we've got a lot more political, which I don't think is a bad thing, um, but all based on our Catholic values and, and, and what are we preparing our students for, to be brilliant people and make the world a better place rather than for an exam. Lovely. Thank, Thank you very much. much. That's fabulous. Yeah, Martin's week is going to be all about a, what does an authentic Catholic curriculum look like? So you'll hear more about it then. But um, certainly if you're in the Diocese of Plymouth, Sister Judith, hopefully will be coming down to us soon to lead some of those training days. And often people like Martin and Claire and Juliana are in, involved in those. So in, um, in one of our future weeks, you will be hearing much more about that from Martin. Bernie, would you like to open up your mic and ask your question? Hi Claire, um, we've got some of our trainee teachers who are on here today. What advice would you give to them who it, they're starting their first job in a Catholic school, some of which are not Catholics themselves? One of the things that we did, um, we, we have, um, we're part of um, a uh, teaching alliance, so we have lots of uh, student teachers in like most schools do um, and one of the things that we did we, we, once we were looking at formation for our staff and um, the lead for ITT in our school said well what about our students what are we doing so she led um, a five-week program just for a, a weekly session on what it means to work in a Catholic school very much based on the book that we're talking about today one of the most useful things that they did was to put their worries in a, it, just to write them down and put them in the box so that we could all talk about them and it was little simple worries about what if I say the wrong thing about a Catholic teaching? What if a child asked me something and I don't know what the Catholic answer would be? And it was just to really put their minds at rest to say, don't, don't worry, don't worry. You know, it's very, very rare that anybody comes out with anything that's so shocking. You know, just, just be, be authentic. I think that's really important. Be authentic. And if, if you're not a Catholic, don't worry about that. You are, you've been created, you've been put on this earth for a reason to do God's work in whatever way that looks like. Um, but don't be shy of asking questions. Please ask questions. Um, I, I was getting, in another school I was in, I was getting a little bit fed up with one of the form tutors that wouldn't make the sign of the cross in assembly. And I said, you know, can you just make the sign of the cross? And he came back to me and he went, I don't know really how you do it and I don't want to get it wrong in front of the kids and it, it was simple as that and I think we've got to take off this idea of why aren't you doing this it's got to be a, a constant conversation so my advice to new members of the staff is go in be you be authentic take your hobbies with you take your gifts with you take your personality and your character with you and um, but do then ask questions that a Catholic school is a wonderful place to work in. It's not a place to be scared or worried that you're going to get it wrong in. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, our next question, thank you, Bernie, for that. Um, our next question, Sister Jude, it's definitely coming your way because you're going to love this question. And maybe um, Brendan might like to help you with it. Sam, do you want to ask your question yourself or do you want me to read it out? Hi, yeah, it was just, I know you've mentioned a lot about the National School of Formation. Um, I was just wondering, is this something that's only available for the head teachers or is it something that everyone can get on board with? Look at the smile on Sister Judith's face. Go for it, Sister. It's just lovely to see Sam. Lovely. Hello, Sam. And, and oh. Brendan, will, Brendan, as director of, of uh, the National School of Formation, will come in. Um, Sam, it, obviously it began... Uh, for head teachers, directors of education, governors, um, and principals. But at the request of the head teachers, it is now broadening out so that it's got particular programs for people who, the first one is in the third year of 
um, working in a Catholic school, they don't have to be Catholic. Then those are, that are aspiring to, to senior leadership or in, lead, in senior leadership. So assistant heads and deputy heads. So those two, we, we're looking all the time at, at how to develop, how to involve people at different levels. Um, and also the possibility of doing one-off um, events, you know, for people with a particular focus. But if I bring Brendan in now, he'll say a bit more about each of the programs. Um, but it, this this should have been the first full year of other programs, but of course with the with the lockdown that stopped. But we we've rescheduled it all, and it's all going to carry on. So um, over to Brendan. It's, uh, it's very good to be with you, folks. Um, but uh, fortunately for me. I, uh, I don't have to explain too many things because we decided on these three programs and two of the leaders of the programs are here now. I'm privileged to be able to lead on the head teacher uh, National School of Formation, but we have uh, Bronny Grogowski and we have Martin Johnson. Uh, it may be if they say just a quick word, so depending on where you are in the, uh, uh, in the school, it'll be more appropriate if they have a quick word. Who wants to go first? Martin, Peter and Paul. Okay, so, so we've got a program uh, that is for people at RQT level and above, usually from the third year on of teaching, and it's called the Peter Paul program. So if you think of St. Peter, who denied knowing Jesus, but he was the one that the church was going to be built on, he was the first Pope. Um, then we've got Paul, who was Saul, the persecutor of Christians, but he was transformed to become Paul, who went out and converted others to become Christian. So the whole program of Peter Paul is a program of, of transformation. And it's about how you as an early on Catholic teacher can become transformative in the lives of others. Because working in a Catholic school is about making Christ known through our actions to fuel our students and our colleagues up with the Holy Spirit to go out for transformation um, and it's that social transformation that Claire was talking about when she was saying don't have a non-uniform day where they just bring a pound get them doing something that's going to change the world so the Peter Paul program is going to be rooted on the prevent duty and the idea of county lines and we're going to get involved with that in terms of how are those young children whose lives are taken down a route that we don't want, how do they become transformed to be people that are responsible citizens? And there is an EDNET project, which is a research project as part of it that you do back in your own schools, which is about how you practically are making a difference to the world through your vocation. So that's the Peter Paul programme. If you go onto the new Educarum website, there's a lot more detail there, and it launches for September 21. Martin, thank you. Grania, I know you're out there, you're on my page three. <laughs> Hi, uh, the Barnabas programme, as it's called, is for senior leaders, for assistant heads and deputies. And it's all about what Martin talked about, it's transformation for leadership. It's about how you, as a, a deputy or an assistant head, support the head in their vision of the Catholic school. Uh, and the programme will be about uh, actually going to the schools, experience what it's like in other schools looking at all the things that they do trans to transform pupils and their students and their staff uh, particularly looking at certain areas that actually they can excel at uh, it'll also be visiting the Loretto uh, Museum in the north uh, and um, we'll be listening to inspirational speakers to actually try and enhance their own formation part of it will be also producing a project that they will actually try and develop in their own school related to the formation of themselves and how they want to um, develop it across the school. So that's, that's the Barnabas programme. Ronya, thank you. Brendan, anything to add or Sister Judith? Uh, what I would say um, here is that what's happened in Catholic education over a few decades is uh, where a sense of purpose has been lost is because we've been looking in the wrong place. Mm. So you see the themes of what we're trying to do. We've named the National School of Formation for Heads. We've named that Christ the Teacher. Because obviously that is the ultimate. 
figure that we would look towards. But we've also, as Martin and Gronio said, looked at Peter and Paul and Barnabas. Why? Because actually what we've got is a treasure trove of examples of lives and uh, systems of living that actually we've forgotten about. And we've seen education here identified by the government and that's the dominant narrative. And then over here, we go to church on a Sunday or we're part of a certain parish community and we do things. And actually, it should be like that. So what we're trying to do is draw on the strength that we have through our scriptures, church teaching, the community, all that support that you get and just marry them together. And that's why people come out the other end inspired. They're actually, as Claire was indicating, far more confident as leaders because they say, do you know what? We don't need the national narrative. We don't need politicians. Actually, what we've got here is a treasure trove that nobody could deny is powerful, significant. And I think really what we need to do is push that out there. And that is there for everyone, whether they're in, wherever they are in our community and whatever their faith background, here is the rich treasure trove. Come and join us and together we grow. Absolutely. Thank you. And can I just come in there? Hi, Sarah. Um, thanks. I totally, absolutely um, want to pick up on that thing of the treasure trove. We must remember that Catholic schools have always been the jewel in the crown of the Catholic Church. And they're there to shine, but they're not there just to shine, to, to boast or, or a sort of uh, elitist attitude. They're there to shine a light on where we need to go. They, they're there to, to witness to something that's very, very radical. So whether you're a, uh, a Catholic or Church of England or Sikh or Hindu or Muslim or not quite sure what on earth you are. Um, every one of the team, every one of our teachers has got a gift and hopefully your head teacher or your governors when you were appointed spotted in you the potential, the potential to take this school where it might not have gone yet and to leave a trail, every head teacher, every governor needs every single member of the team. There cannot be a weak member of the team. And they are missionary teams, not going out to India or Africa or, or other parts of the world, missionary in your part of the world. So the gift of every person in your school, the newest person, the youngest, most inexperienced, whoever they are, is part of those jewels in the crown. And that's what we really focus on. By finding the gift in a teacher, you set them free and they soar. If teachers are, or, or teaching assistants or, or support staff are forced into a straight jacket, they don't flourish, just as children don't flourish. So Educarum is looking at ways in helping the teachers to soar to go to a level that they never thought they could do by using their gift. So Martin and Gronya and Brendan are helping to, to design programs that will enable people to become those educators, those formators that the church so desperately needs. And it's very urgent, extremely radical and very creative. But we're open, aren't we, Brendan, Martin, Gronje? We're open to suggestions from the youngest, most inexperienced, right up to the most experienced as to what we might need to provide. So to all of you listening, don't you hold back. No, nope, you are the future. Thank you very much. And I have to, have to say, such great fun. <laughs> as well as all that has been said, you will have such great fun. You'll meet people who who are, are in this for the same reason as you. We're all here, you know, because of the why as much as everything else and, and, and all of this training and formation. I mean, this is, I don't know about you, so it'd be great fun today. I do just have to do a shout out for Stephanie, who has done all of this from her garden. Stephanie Massey, I am so impressed. So impressed. I've been flicking through my pages thinking I don't want to miss out on anything. I'm so impressed. And nobody has been tempted to change their background I don't know if you know that you can change your virtual background here 
So um, I do um, a Zoom meeting with our parish every week and one week I'm in San Francisco, and the next week I'm on the beach. Um, you've all been so well behaved. We have gone over slightly um, and I have to confess that I, I was so worried about getting cut off after our 40 minutes that I did actually pay, pay my money and think, no, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk this a little bit. So we are going to try and keep our sessions to about 45 minutes. We don't want to ask too much of you. We've got quite a few people I can see. Claire Campbell, who's also one of our future speakers. Hi, Claire. Um, Paula Fern is here, who's going to be on the NSF programme this year. I think you're the only one, Paula, from our diocese who's on on today. Uh, it's just been so lovely to see you all and I'm hoping you're realising that this is just a very informal conversation. It's a little bit of input, a chance to chat. I oh, Hang on, I think there's one more question we might need to deal with before we go. Um, but I also, people as stuff like Jane who know um, have worked with me before, I, I usually have a, a session that I call there are no stupid questions, but there might be some daft answers session where you can ask anything you want. Hopefully you know that this is a a shared space it's kind of confidential you know we won't be sharing anything out of here or rigging up your DSCs and saying you'll never guess what they said um, it is meant to be a very informal chance to learn from each other with each other to magpie ideas which is one of my favorite things to do um, and just to learn a little bit more about our faith about our school so we have got I'm afraid I don't know your uh, don't know your name as an RQT, can I help develop more experienced teachers in an authentic way, not just a gov.uk way? Previous post by Daisy. Sorry, it's coming up as unknown. Daisy. Hello, Daisy. Do you want to Hello. tell us a bit more about that? Hi, Daisy. Hi. From um, the classroom. I know, in the classroom. Um, so I am on the RQT formation programme at the moment, um, and it's my first year working in a Catholic school. So obviously I'm finding out new information and learning about all the different ways we can make the children saints and be individual people. Um, but obviously some experienced teachers might have their old ways and they tend to stick to them. So I'm just wondering as a recently qualified teacher, if there's any ways I can try and develop the, over, uh, the experienced teachers in a more uh, um, authentic way. Do we have a volunteer? I can see Sister nice. Judith nice. smiling. Nice. Go on Claire, go for it. Please, please, please go and see your head teacher. Book an appointment with them. They can't say no. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. we'll just mute him for a moment, Daisy. <laughs> I, I just, Daisy, it's so important, and and I, and I, I never realised this. Being ahead can be quite a lonely place to be. And you can have days where you are constantly dealing with negative, negative, negative. When I have a, a member of staff saying, can I come and meet you? Because I've got an idea. I love it. I love <laughs> it. And sometimes, Daisy, you have to be careful because people will block you from getting to the head or yeah. getting to somebody because they don't. Yeah. But do just say, or, you know, if they're on lunchtime duty on the field or something, just go and have a chat to them. But I've learned more from others then you know it's really important that we get your ideas and your freshness and 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 where you're coming from um and i, I must admit we had an ascension day where a, a recently qualified teacher said to me can we blow up these balloons and send them off into the <laughs> ascension it was absolutely lovely but um and we got in touch with the airport so we were dead clever but what we didn't do is get in touch with farmers and it seems that these balloons can be really bad for cows. Oh, anyway, oh no. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But if you don't, if you've got to have those conversations with people, head teachers love to hear. So please do peck and say. And, and Sam, you were saying about the National School of Formation, you can't be the church unless you are filled with grace and you need to have that input you need your spiritual petrol your oxygen oxygen mask whatever it is you need that time and support from mentors from inspirational teachers from courses like this it is vital it's a necessity it isn't a luxury so you must try and push and get yourselves onto these courses definitely absolutely i wholeheartedly agree with um everything that Claire has said and also just to add that you know whether it's head teachers DSCs parish priests canons we can all learn from people like you and so often um, I will talk with with staff about you, you you have a nudge that passion that's coming from you to share something with others 
it, it's a nudge from God. It's a, you know, it's a, a God incident. You know, we all call it different things. There's a reason you're being called to do that. So if it's come into your head, head teachers will just love to hear from you. Don't ever worry about it. Please keep offering up because it's, it's your gifts that we want to use because God gave them to you for a reason. So please don't ever be shy about that. I thought I had another question, but actually it was just a goodbye from someone. Um, we probably do need to, we could probably roll for another hour actually if we let it, but I think it's quite important we try to keep these sessions short and sweet because we shall be meeting again next week, hopefully all of you. Uh, this has just been fabulous, uh, really fabulous. It's been so lovely to see you all and to see so many of you from all over the country. If you did have questions from today that you thought you were a bit shy to type in or ask, then save them up for next week. Next week we have got Dawn Potterton, who's a head teacher of one of our schools here in the Diocese of Plymouth, and she's going to share a little bit more about her story and why she is where she is, how she got there. So um, there we are. I did try to put up the um, the 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 session from to, from today all that all of our speakers pretty much only one i'm holding out for confirmation on um but other than that we have got all of our speakers confirmed now so that's really good news and lots of fabulousness to come including brendan sister judith claire martin um i'm trying to think who else julianne i've already mentioned um so quite a few people who are on here so look claire you made that look so easy uh, it, we could give you a round of applause, definitely. Thank you, everyone. Um, I wonder, now, I, I, the other thing I have learned is that you can't say a collective prayer on Zoom with everyone's mics open. So you can do it, but if you try and do it, drag you for each other, it's a nightmare. So I do think it would be really fitting for us all to end with, with the Lord's Prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, Guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. The sun is shining down here in beautiful Torquay. Fabulous to see you. See you all next week. Thank you. Bye.